Hello and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Miana Melendez and I'm sharing all about Miana in Mexico, my life experience here, how, to, how I got here, how I moved here from Chicago, as well as some uh, spirituality and hair care as well. And so today I really wanna share with you my personal experience of living here in Mexico, specifically in Jalisco, because you know it's one thing to get the logistics of how I actually moved here, but what's been my experience here, right? I've been here for almost four years. It'll be four years in August. So uh, I wanted to share some of my real life experience of being here um, and all of its multiple angles. So originally I'm from Chicago. Many of you know that if you've seen my first video, um, but, I, but more specifically, I'm also a second generation Puerto Rican and I'm also black. So for me, moving here um, has a lot to go on with culture as, language, as, long, as well as language, right? And so what I really want to share with you is how being biracial, being a mixed uh, woman of color, how that has experienced, how that has influenced my experience of living here and how do people interact with me when they see me, right? So I've lived specifically in three different cities or towns um, here in the state of Jalisco and my experience has been different in every location. Um, what I would say, I'm living, I've been living here in Puerto Vallarta for at least two years and that experience has been pretty, um, pretty, uh, not well received is what I want to say, but it's been pretty uh, mixed because the culture that's here is very um, expat, American, Canadian friendly. And so for me, you know, most people while I'm living here, most Mexicans speak English here. Um, and that's not the same throughout all of Mexico or even throughout Jalisco. So for me, living here has been really interesting because I've actually been able to practice my Spanglish because in some way or another, we at least can understand each other um, when I'm talking to a national um, from, from here. Whereas in other places that I've lived in, in Ajajic, which is like a Pueblo Magica, beautiful little um, town outside of Guadalajara, as well as Barra uh, de Navidad, which is a, a beach town, both of those places did not have um, any real, I mean, there was other ex expats there or um, people from other uh, countries there, but um, most of the Mexicans there spoke only um, Spanish. And so it's important to know how that influences how you're going to interact with people because I've seen I've seen it done here where you know we think as as Americans maybe as Canadians that we could just come to this country and they're going to a understand us in English or b that that we expect them to um to have to speak English in their own home country. So I I think anybody who's watching that probably also thinks that's crazy, but I've seen it happen time and time again where they're at a restaurant or other people are at a store and they're speaking English to a national here and not trying to speak any words of Spanish. That's just rude. Um, for me, I would have at the very least get on my Google Translator, which I know most smartphones have, and at least show them what I'm trying to say. Um, I know I've literally done that in the past and that has kind of um, supported the language barrier. Um, but for me personally, most, most of the times uh, that I've been here, most people, most nationals here uh, know that I'm not Mexican because my hair or just my skin tone, even though there are a lot of Mexicans, um, especially in Southern Mexico and Oaxaca that might look like me in some way, um, they know at least here in Jalisco that I'm not Mexican. So for most of them here, but they know I am Latina. So they do speak some kind of Spanish to me. Um, and only once I you know, open my mouth and start speaking, they hear that I don't have uh, a true Latin accent from anywhere. My accent is from Chicago. Um, and then on the flip side, sometimes they only try to speak English to me and I always try to respond in Spanish. So at least I'm practicing and sometimes, especially in Ubers, um, Uber drivers, they're like, oh, I'm gonna speak English to you to practice and you respond in Spanish. And I'm like, perfect. Um, Cause to me that is the best of both worlds. Cause I want to 
I moved here to practice and learn more Spanish. Um, but if I can support somebody else and maybe learning English, you know, for a 15 minute car ride, that's a win-win for me. Um, but I also would say on the flip side of that, um, because they know, sometimes they know that I'm Latina, sometimes they know I'm American, sometimes I guess it's somewhere a little bit of both. Um, but a word that, you know, a lot of people use which is not necessarily a derogative word, but it's not the best either, is gringo or gringa, uh, which pretty much means uh, a person from um, from the States. A gringo or gringa is uh, technically a white person, um, but either way, it still can, it still would apply to me even, because they know I'm from the, from the States. Um, and so sometimes I've also been in other situations where um, let somebody is uh, trying to jack up the price on me, whether that's at a restaurant um, or you know uh, uh, maybe not an Uber ride because those are you know measured, but a regular taxi where you just hop in and ask for the amount. Um, that is something that I've definitely run into uh, throughout Mexico, where as soon as I speak uh, my Spanish, even though it's obviously not um, national Spanish or any type of Latin true Spanish accent wise, um, they jack the price up. And so me living here um, for three and a half years, I know what the prices should be, at least in my area in PV. And so, um, and I, again, know how to speak at least intermediate Spanish in some way. And so I always tell them like, no, más caro, like, yo vivo aquí tres años, no, like, yo entiendo todo, pero, like, no, like, I know that this should only cost 50 pesos, and that's what I'm giving you, this is not worth 70 pesos, so, um, I've definitely been in those situations, but it's also important to know where are you in Mexico, because, um, here in Puerto Vallarta, as well as in uh, the Yucatan or Quintana Roo, um, are very uh, tourism based and are also very um, high season based. And by that I mean, sorry, I have a hair that of course is only showing up while I'm on camera. Um, but high season uh, means that uh, usually there's only, there's peak times throughout the year, like when it's cold in uh, Canada or the US, you know, it's still warm here. And so that's the high season, usually from October through March or April is the high season in these places because that's when they get an influx of uh, foreigners coming because it's still warm here. Um, and the low season is usually uh, the spring, summer because it's so hot here and it's hot everywhere else, you know, in June, July, and August. And so most people go back to wherever um, their original country is, their home country. So um, that's also something to take note of because where you are it might maybe it is more expensive to live in Quintana Roo or you know here in PV during the high season if you get like a short-term lease but that's also expected because this is the time of year that everyone's coming so it might be more expensive but they also might be you know they might truly have limited space but also they might just be jacking up the price a little bit but usually because of the currency exchange it's still favorable in whatever your home currency is. Um, but of course, once you really start to see um, the current prices of what things should be, you can definitely uh, talk your way down um, out of those things, especially at like a tangies, at like a, a flea market kind of thing. Those are spaces and places where you can kind of um, talk things down because nothing is written uh, on paper, whereas at you know a restaurant, the food is is what it is. It's written on paper, like you can't change that, right? Um, but I've been at some beach towns, beach places where you know the menu, is, the price is on the menu, but then when I get my receipt, um, there's a huge amount of gratuity, which I don't agree with because. Um, it means that even if I'm just there with two or three people, like I understand gratuity, you know, um, bigger for a party of eight or 10, that makes total sense, it's usually included. But for a party of one, two or three people, you know, that it's, it's not. So I think there's just um, some cult cultural customs, some uh, cultural know-how to, uh, to navigate around once you uh, live here. Um, but I also would say too, so for me, um, being Latina means that uh, I try even harder to speak more Spanish because I, they know that I know that, I, that somewhere in my ancestry I can, um, but also because usually they want to learn, you know, they want to touch my hair. That's something that 
um, I perceive in a warm way here. Um, I know in the States, uh, growing up in Chicago, it's still a very diverse um, place, but you know, I know that um, there used to be this invasion of privacy or an invasion of space where people would be like, oh, let me touch your hair. Um, or is that real? Is it really your hair? Um, and it would, you know, kind of be in like one of those backhanded compliments. Um, but here, because there truly is such a richness in culture and a richness in people, um, depending on what side of the country you're on, people truly look different and our influences by um, the Spaniards that conquered here, the Mayans, the Aztecs, you know, there was a black port here as well in Veracruz. So everywhere, everyone looks a little different, you, you know. Um, and so here, because they truly probably have never seen someone who looks like me, I love when they touch my hair because for me, it's um, it's almost an embrace of culture. Maybe that's not how they see it, but they love my curls or, um, you know, I do braids as well. So I do my chinos or my, these are chinos. I do my trenzas, which are braids and they love my braids. They love seeing them and they're just done, you know, three here, three here, you know, nothing really all that cute, but um, protective of this dry, currently it's dry weather here, dry season here. So there's no rain um, and they love it. You know, they love seeing my hair because their hair literally can't do that. Um, so it just depends on where where you are, um, but knowing that um, you you know you coming here or you living here um, is bringing your own flavor. But most importantly, is to embrace a culture that's already here. It's something that you can't change, um, and why would you want to, right? Um, but. I think it's something to be respectful of and to, uh, you know, spend time with the people or, you know, go to the little arrebotes. You know, I love, um, I have a local arrebote or little tienda, you know, little supermarket. It's not a Jewel Osco or a Dominic's or, you know, a Mariano's. It's a small little store, um, but it's the place where I get all of my fresh fruit, my, uh, my foods, and they know me there. So um, in the first few, you know, for the first year, you know, it was, really practicing and but they know and they know me now and so it's one of those things where like if i'm struggling that you know like the cashiers the women know that like oh like it's miana like let's help her or you know if i'm trying to say something they know kind of what i'm understanding and so it's building those local community um connections and friendships that it's going to support you in living here um, as well as just getting out and meeting new people you know it's really hard when you're living somewhere you know you could be by yourself maybe you're with someone else um, or you know meeting up with friends along the way for travels um, but it's really important to experience you know what is happening here and to you know if you're eating by yourself get your food you know and sit there don't just get it to go um that's something that i know has really supported me and just eating with the people or spending time with the people getting on the local you know transit of course it's super easy um to get on an uber at least here in pv um but i know in other places ubers aren't really a thing but there might be obviously taxis um that's another great way because as soon as you start talking and they hear your accent isn't local or latin um they want to talk to you they want to know where you're from what you're about and so it's been um really an eye-opening experience to learn about myself um, while also learning about them. And I think it's also a, a cultural exchange of beneficial um, experience for both of us. And, uh, but I will say ultimately that I do feel more Latina now than of course I lived in the States because I'm living in a Latin country. Um, but I, I still have, of course, my, my black roots uh, that can't go away either. Um, and if anything, I try to uh, incorporate both of those things in my cooking or in the music that I listen to. You know, I, I listen to more Spanish music now because I'm trying to learn more Spanish and it's easy when it's, you know, Spanish words are against a melody, of course, like Selena. But, um, it's, it's something that is like a fusion of everything. So I'm Puerto Rican, I'm black, and I live in Mexico, and all of that 
richness is now within me. And so I, I love living here. Um, and I know with more travels, I'll get to experience other places throughout Mexico. Um, I've also been to Mexico City twice, which is a very different experience. I've been to Aguascalientes, which is literally in the middle of the country. There's been a lot of history and revolutions that have happened in Aguascalientes. It's a beautiful place. Um, it's where my boyfriend's from, as well as, um, what is it? Quintana Roo is another, um, no, not Quintana Roo, sorry. Uh, Guanajuato is another um, state that's just below Mexico City that I've also been to as well. And each of them have their own experience and each of them, you know, it, um, embrace me and, and see that who I am um, and, and uh, appreciate that I A, am speaking Spanish and B, am and trying their local foods. You know, it's not like we're just going to Burger King or whatever the franchise is. Like we're definitely going to the small taco spot and eating whatever that local food is because that's how you experience culture. So this is my experience of living here in Mexico. And I hope this supports you in hearing more about, um, about what it's like to live in, in a new country, what it's like to, uh, to have to deal with the high season, low season, the tourism, um, other expats who live here, the nationals who um, who want to get to know you or you know want to raise the price on you. Um, it's all uh, a flow, an ebb and a flow, right? And so um, I hope this supports you in getting some more firsthand experience of what it's like for, uh, to live outside the U.S. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to see them below. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Have a great rest of your day.